Now, the interesting thing is that if you look at the uh, time here from 1850 to the year uh, where we are now, 20, uh, 2008, and if you were to plot the sea surface temperature, you'll see it goes down and up, down and up, but in general, there's an upward trend. And then if you were to plot the number of storms each year, that's the blue curve, you can see that, my goodness, it tends to be almost the same. So in other words, the temperature of the North Atlantic Ocean says a lot about how many hurricanes there are and also how strong they will be. So we've seen this upward trend, as Dr. Curry was talking about, in temperature, and we've also seen an upward trend in the number of hurricanes. So that's something we have to keep in mind because we know right now in the present climate that hurricanes cause great devastation. And so the question we have is, if we do get more of them and they are stronger in the future, we're going to have to be very, very careful and think ahead how we're going to adapt, excuse me, adapt to hurricanes getting stronger. Now, this is a complicated diagram. All I want to sh show this is time, and this red curve here, this is the number of category four and five hurricanes, very strong hurricanes, the strongest hurricanes. In 1970, there were roughly 40 of them. And now this has gone up to uh, over 90. So the number of the strongest hurricanes have grown enormously around the whole world. So this is something that we have to be very, very careful about. Give you an idea, these are all the tracks of the hurricanes in a five-year period, uh, four or five-year period. And you can see just by looking that in the last 10 years, from 1995 to 2004, the number of hurricanes has increased enormously. And we'll show some examples of that in just a moment. This is the year 2005, where for the first time, we had uh, 27 storms that they gave a name to. In other words, they, they got to uh, intense enough to have a name. Uh, Katrina was one of those. And uh, that's a, a record of so many storms for a very, very long <coughs> period of time. So the number of storms we are getting now is about uh, 15 to 20 storms every year, 15 uh, named storms every year, compared to before 1995, it was about uh, half that. Yes? How do you deal with the hurricane season? Uh, hurricane season is uh, June 1st to November 30th. But sometimes, like in this year, the last hurricane occurred actually in 2006. So it lasted a long, long time. So this is to give you an idea how strong the storms are. Um, Category 1 through Category 5. This is the two men, Sapper, who is a, actually a Georgia Tech graduate, and Bob Simpson put together a table. And this shows you how strong the storms are. For example, Category 1 is 74 to 95 mile per hour, all the way down to 155 mile per hour plus. And then it's also storm surges, which we'll talk about in a moment. These will cause water to go onto the land about four to five feet high. These can do 20 to 30 feet. Katrina had storm surges of over 30 feet. I'll show you some pictures of that in just a moment. And this is the type of damage that you get. If you have a category one, you, you blow down a few trees and some power lines. But as you get down through here, not a building in Atlanta would be less without damage if there was a category five. So these are four of the storms. And I, don't expect you to understand too much about this. It's, it's just Hurricane Katrina here that went through New Orleans and it started here and went through Florida as a weak category one. And here was a category five, it was a category three when it went ashore. But I'll show you some of the damage that such a storm does in just a minute. Um, th there, this was a, a year of enormous record setting. The strongest and the storms of the lowest pressure uh, it's the first time we've had five major hurricanes in the Gulf of Carpentier, in the Gulf of, of Mexico in one time. So, how do hurricanes do damage and threaten life? Well, they do four things. I'm going to ask you a question now. There's wind damage, storm surge and coastal flooding, inland rainfall flooding, and tornadoes. So which do you think does the worst damage? Is it wind? Who thinks it's wind that's most of the damage of hurricanes? Nobody. The storm surge, who thinks that's? Uh-huh. What about inland flooding? 
Uh-huh. Tornadoes. Uh-huh. Well, wind damage is, is pretty bad. Storm surges very close to the coast can be devastating, but in general, people are evacuated away, except in places like Bangladesh, where they know nowhere to go. The inland rainfall flooding actually causes the most damage. And tornadoes, they tend to be rather weak, but they tend to be spread out over the all of the United States. So uh, most loss of life, as I'll show you right now, tends to be caused by water uh, uh, from, from either coastal flooding or, or from inland flooding. Wind about causes about 12% of the deaths, tornadoes about 4%, and so on. If you now look at tropical cyclone deaths in terms of people who are killed, freshwater flooding inland accounts for about 60%. And uh, the storm surge, this is the here, sorry, is a very small amount, mainly because people have been moved away from the coastal areas. And uh, this is the, again, where the flooding takes place, the coastal counties, but these are a long way from the coastal regions. When, when Katrina went into um, New Orleans, it kept going, but not with very strong winter, went all the way to the Great Lakes with an enormous amount of rainfall flooding everywhere. So don't just think of a hurricane as hitting the coast and that's it. I'll show you some pictures of that in a moment. This is wind damage. This is Andrew. It was in a Category 4 hurricane that went through Miami, causing enormous problems. Now the interesting thing uh, for all those who like mathematics and uh, who like engineering, if you're going to build a robot to stop the wind or do something like that, you have to remember that the stronger the wind, you have twice the wind, the, uh, four times the damage is done. So you double the wind. So as you go from a category one to a category four, the amount of, of, of damage is over 100 um, times greater. So a building that can stand a category one may be wiped away with a category four or five. It's an interesting um, thing. But what happens when you have wind damage, even from a Category 1? Yes? Uh, have there been buildings that can withstand Category 5? Um, category 5 is a tough one. It, 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 there are two aspects of, 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 death, of, of buildings. Um, one, how often does Category 5 go through a place? And two, how much would it cost to make it uh, um, so that it doesn't get knocked over by a Category 5? And it, they're very, very extensively like a blockhouse made of cement with no windows. It would be a very nice place to live. So what you do, you have uh, housing um, codes. We say that if you live in Florida, you have a, uh, houses which are uh, steel reinforced and bolted down to the foundations. They can withstand a category three or four uh, hurricane normally. But then again, wind doesn't not just blow things over, they blow trees over, which blow into other buildings and they cut holes in walls and things. You had a question? You mean oh, you mean streamline? It's a good idea, but the trouble is you're not quite sure what the winds are going to be where the storm is. So you might build it pointing into where you think it's going to be, and then all of a sudden the winds are to the side. You know what you could do is is make the house so you could rotate it. <laughs> then you, really, it's a good idea. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Oh, what type of storm would Georgia Tech stand? Um, that's a very good question, and my guess is not a very strong one. Uh, we're very good with rainfall from the storms that come inland, and, and when we get when they get to to Georgia Tech, the the wind is um, uh, not very strong. We get lots and lots of rain. I think we could probably stand up to a Category One, Category Two, without too much damage. The worst thing is that you're only as safe as your worst building. But your worst building will disintegrate and sheet metal will fly off and then have, and help destroy the next building. So that's the thing that, why there are building codes now which insist that when you build a, a, a building, it has to be certain, uh, rigid to a certain extent. Yes? Um, I'm just wondering, 